Now there's two, there's a big elephant, there's two big elephants in the room I did not mention that have a relationship to development, but I don't consider them to be drivers. They have a relationship. They can complement, but they're not what I would consider to be drivers. The first one is the level of the other players. They have a relationship to my son's development. They can augment it in some ways and they can distract from it in some ways. But I would not consider them to be a driver. I have not ever considered the level of the other players to be a driver of my child's development at all. So one big divide when I speak to parents and coaches is they believe that the perceived level of the other players is an important component of their child or the player's development. I don't believe that any uh, that's the case, definitely not in the uh, foundational phase. And I would probably go all the way up to what I consider to be the mm, performance phase. Maybe, maybe 16, I think maybe it starts creeping in, but uh, and even that, so we can quibble on that exact, because I think it'll be a little different for each player and each situation. But in general, they can complement, they can augment, and they can definitely distract. So there's a relationship there, but not nearly as much as uh, I often hear. And the next uh, one, and this is a big divide, is the perceived level of competition um, in these leagues or other uh, uh, and these formal gaming programs. I think there's a relationship there. The biggest relationship to me is the games reflect what is happening in training. And so games can illuminate things that need to be tweaked in training. But the divide is, I feel as if people believe the game in these structured gaming programs are drivers of development. They are some essential ingredient. What they perceive to be a high level is some essential ingredient to the development. And I've had this conversation with parents from the time that my son was eight or nine. And now my older son is 14 and it's the same conversation. And every year it's the same conversation that you got to put them in what they perceive to be competitive gaming programs as a function of the development because they're not going to get some skill that they need, or at least they cannot execute the skill at the level they're going to need to be able to do it because they're not playing in what they perceive to be competitive gaming environment. And they're not playing with what they perceive to be a higher level of players. And so that's the fundamental divide where I see there being a relationship. And in an ideal world, you could tick all the boxes, but we never live in a high ideal world. And so tough choices, at least for me in the States, have to be made. And I have erred on the side of choosing an environment that I felt like the adults had the mindset of high performance, high expectations. The culture was there of high performance, high expectation, expectations. The training environment was there in that they were creating realistic game-like scenarios that improved decision-making and they provided the instruction at the right times to improve on-field performance. I felt like all of that was in place And I felt as if the players were at the level to help achieve these goals. And the club, because they have players at their disposal, would create training groups to help match players with the developmental abilities at the time. And no one's, no club is ever going to be perfect, but they would 
So in other words, my son might train with an older group this week and a younger group this week and do this and do that because you can do that in the training environment in a much more efficient way than you can in a league that has these rules around parity. 